faith sharing with you today some things concerning water baptism sharing with you some things concerning being baptized in Jesus' name being baptized in Jesus' name being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus um, being baptized in the spirit of God with the evidence of speaking in unknown tongues so we just thank God for the gifts of the spirit gifts of the Holy Spirit of God um, for the last uh, couple of episodes on here uh, if you have you have been following me on the podcast, God bless you. But you who have been following me on the YouTube's, God bless you. Um, God is able to make you stand in any in every situation. Hallelujah. Um, pastor, um, uh, pastor, yesterday I believe, believe it's yesterday. Sometimes we work at midnight; it's hard to keep your day straight. <laughs> Trust me. But I do believe it was just. I do believe yesterday was Sunday. Uh, yesterday we was in church uh in the name of jesus um pastor i put this i put the mess some of the messes up on youtube um hope you don't mind you know but pastor rob preached a, a powerful message uh, speaking about joseph how he was sold into egypt into slavery and how he had resisted potiphar's wife um when potiphar's wife began to come on to him my god and yeah so it was just it's just so amazing how um glory to god you see in every man every man every woman is different and you ask yourself why was joseph able to overcome such a temptation but samson david judah just to name a few didn't or couldn't and i do believe and i wrote another book <laughs> besides this one that i'm going to share with you in, in later um, that deals with why certain men are able to overcome sexual temptation and certain men are not able to overcome the temptation. Hallelujah. And, and the past when he was preaching, um, if you're familiar with the story, I believe it started in Genesis chapter 37, that how Joseph was in the house of Potiphar. He's in the house of the Egyptians and Potiphar's wife begins to come on to Joseph and and, and, and try to tempt him to, to sleep with her and different things and I begin to think of the different characters in the Bible and I begin to think and this is what I do for myself I say well what would happen if, was, or if David was in that certain situation what would happen if Samson was in that situation what would happen if Judah was in that situation what would happen if Jacob or Abraham or um, different men and the great men of, uh, uh, in the Bible that you see um, that may have had some things going on with them that others didn't. What would happen if they was in that same situation? And here's the answer that I do with the God gave it to me. It's quite simple. The reason you can't think about what Moses or Samson or David or good Judah and all these people were done in that certain situation that Joseph was caught up in because God knows that Joseph is the only one that can handle that. <laughs> He's the one that can resist that type of things going on in his life and coming his way. Hallelujah. See, you got to understand something quite simply. Is that. Oh, I'm getting to some detail. I, I wish I had time because. I often hear preachers judge other preachers and I often hear preachers actually judge and criticize men and women in the Bible. I hear people criticize Samson all the time. I have folks criticize Moses for for um, spiting the hitting the rock instead of speaking to the rock. I, I hear all these men and women criticizing these men. And I'm thinking, you gotta understand, my man, is that the temptation or the struggle that these men and women were going through, you couldn't handle what they was going through. You can't, you because a lot of people would say, well, if I was Moses, I would have just spoke to the rock says, instead of hitting the rock. You can't even handle the hundred members you got now. How are you gonna handle two about two point five million people? As he was handling. You can't even handle the church you got now. How in the world are you going to handle 50 or 60,000 members? So God knows how much you can bear. He knows the capacity. That's why we got to be humble. Stay humble. And ask God really to release his power. Um, to say no to the flesh. My God. It's, it's a powerful thing. The flesh is a powerful thing. Paul said this about his flesh. Paul said this about the flesh. Paul said this about his flesh. Paul said, I know that within me dwelleth no good thing. Whoa. He's talking about his flesh. He said, I know within me dwells no good thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we have to 
And then Paul talks about how he disciplines himself, how he disciplines his body, and how he uh, forsakes certain things. Simply because, um, and he does this simply because um, you have to train yourself. You have to buff it. You're, you know, athlete, you look at these athletes that go out here and they're just supernaturally gifted and they don't practice. You think Michael Jordan just went out there and just shot a basketball and never, never practiced? You think Kobe's and God rest his soul and all the bronze or, or, or people, uh, or Barry Sanders or these great athletes, Serena Williams on it. They go out there and they just supernaturally just do it. They ain't practice. They ain't study. They No, they have to train themselves. They have to train their bodies. They have to keep going at it. They keep studying. They keep going at it. And they keep going and going and going. And because they're hungry. They're hungry for not being ordinary. They're hungry, they're, they're hungry for not just being another athlete. Just not being another athlete that's collecting a check. No, they want to be great. They want to be dominant. They want to be Aredo Kola. They want to be legendary. You right now, my friend. You right now, my brother. You right now, preacher or teacher or elder or or a CEO or or um, businessman or uh, rabbi, a bag lady, or security guard or doctor or whoever you are, whatever you're doing in your life, be the best at it. Train yourself. And you trying to be a better Christian, train yourself. You trying to say no to sex. You trying to say no to drugs. You trying to say no to train your body. One of the best ways to do it is to get a fasting life going with your prayer life. Because I've learned that when we start denying ourselves of certain things, we're practicing. Now, I'm a man that was addicted to this. I just recently started back drinking it, you know. But I found a way because I've been leaving a, living a, trying to live a vegan lifestyle. One of the vegan lifestyles is I see no no meat, dairy, no cheese, stuff like that. So I've been laying low on the meat, dairy, and cheese. So I found a way, you know, to substitute dairy in this for something else. But that doesn't mean that I should go out every day and drink this, does it? I cannot be brought under the power of anything. I can't let I can't let nothing have rule over me. Other than Jesus Christ, because if you, when you start letting other things have rule over you, your flesh starts to tell you what to do now. Your flesh is telling you, your flesh is trying to tell you when to sleep, when to eat, when to pray, when to work out, when to fast. Your flesh shouldn't be in control. What has to be in control is the Spirit of God. Now, I wrote this book with that in mind. I wrote this book trying, trying to get ways from the Spirit of God to battle sexual temptation that comes to the man and woman of God. Because everybody's not a Joseph. Some of you are a David, ain't you? <laughs> Some of you are watching Bathsheba at night, ain't you? And whether Bathsheba is on your phone, whether it's in the TV screen, whether it's a certain sitcom you like, whether it's a certain um, a sick, uh, a certain show on stars or HBO that you may like, or, uh, you know, or different things. Maybe it's a certain star that you like. Your Bathsheba can be anything. Your Bathsheba can be somebody bathing naked and you just looking and looking and looking. So who is your Bathsheba right now? Who are you looking at right now with the eyes, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life? You have to train your eyes. You have to train yourself saying no, that, that it's enough. You got to tell your flesh sometimes that it's enough. Yeah, that, that is, you don't need another bite of that chicken. You don't need another, you don't need another plate. No, you don't need another drink. The flesh is never satisfied. Did you know that? That's why you keep desiring sexual things. That's why you keep desiring things of the flesh. That's why you keep, you, you, you desiring hate. You desiring envy. You desire these things. Your flesh wants, wants the confusion. Your flesh wants the drama. Your flesh wants the struggle. Your flesh wants it. But you're going to have to learn how to tell the flesh no. You're going to have to learn how to tell the flesh no, not this time. No, no, you're going to bed when I tell you to go to bed. No, no, you're going to eat when I tell you to eat. No, no, you're going to... Your spirit has to be in control. Your spirit man has to be in control. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so that's what we've written this book. Barnes & Noble's online bookstore. If you're a man struggling with temptation, if you're a man struggling with uh, homosexuality, if you're a man struggling with heterosexualism, that's a new thing I came out with. If you're a man... Struggling uh, and trying to stop having sex before marriage. If you're a man that's caught up in threesomes. If you're a man or a woman that's cheating on your husband right now. Cheating on your wife. 
cheating on your girlfriend, cheating on your fiance, cheating on yourself, cheating on your taxes, cheating. If you're a man right now, just a, a, a slave to opioids. You may be a man right now that's struggling right now. If you're a man right now struggling right now, you're struggling, to, you're struggling with the church. You're struggling to go to work. You're struggling. You're just depressed. You don't want to go to work. You don't want to go to church. You don't want to play with your kids. You don't want to play with your wife. You don't want to do anything. You just want to sit there and be depressed and be the lonely and be discouraged. That is the flesh. That is the flesh right now in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the flesh. The flesh wants to be depressed. The flesh wants to be lonely. The, fr the flesh wants what it wants. But right now in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, if you can get on Barnes and Nobles online bookstore and get this joint right here, it can help you with some of those issues in your life. Listen, if, so now you also you will listen on the podcast. We're talking about the book called The Sexual Demon in the Church. You heard it right. The Sexual Demon demon in the church now watch this now watch this now um by written by tim mcavay lee and you can get this on barnes and nobles online bookstores on the place you can get it barnes and nobles online bookstore now when i had someone who seemed to cover this book it actually was a different cover back in the day when i first started. but i had somebody to see the cover of this book and immediately they were offended immediately they were questioning what i was talking about open the book up open the book Let's begin to read never judge a book by its cover now <laughs> oh, that bush. I'm on my car. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and maybe I should read you about this a paragraph out of this bad boy says you insist as we're uh, getting ready to um, do um, in the name of Jesus what, what we have to do. And for God, <laughs> but God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Until next time, God bless. Amen and amen.